Hello and welcome to another episode of Katie the Science Lady. I'm Mrs. Jacobson and today's topic is the cell cycle. So let's learn together. So today's topic is the cell cycle. When we talk about the cell cycle, as we're going to talk about it today, I'm going to refer to eukaryotic cells only. So I'm talking animals, plants, and funguses. We're not going to be talking about bacteria. Um, they have a different method of cell division called binary fission, where they essentially just split apart. Um, it's a little simpler, less complicated than the eukaryotic version, um, which we're going to focus on today because it occurs in our cells. So first off, why do cells have to divide? Why can't we just start off as a single-celled zygote and stay that way forever? Now, one, it'd be a little weird having one cell try to do everything that our body can do. It would be a blob, it wouldn't work very well. But beyond that, multicellular organisms like ourselves have to grow by making more cells, not bigger cells. And here's why. When our cells get too big, our cell membranes can't exchange waste for nutrients fast enough. So when you get a cell that's too big, essentially it can't get enough food and water in and it can't get rid of enough waste. So it kind of starves and drowns in its waste all at the same time, which is not a good way to go. And when we talk about that, we have to do a little bit of math here. We're talking about surface area. So if you take a look at our first tier, the surface area of the large cube, it's 5,400 units. Um, when we talk about that, it's micrometers. Units is fine for today. The same space will be taken up by 27 smaller cubes or cells. And it has a much larger surface area, more than 16,200 micrometers of surface area. Now, if you're wanting to exchange lots of nutrients, food, waste quickly, you don't want it to all be stuck to a smaller surface area. You want to have lots of area to get rid and do that exchange. So that's why we have more small cells than we do just a smaller amount of large cells. There are a couple of reasons why our cells divide. Division is needed for the first thing, growth. That's the most obvious to us. We're not the same size we were when we were born. We know that we have to grow over time. The second is healing. Whenever you get a cut, it doesn't stay there forever. Now you, sometimes you may scar, but you still develop those brand new cells that are gonna take the place if you cut your wrist or get a burn on your hand or something like that. Development is the third. We know we're not the same as when we were born, Different body parts grow at different rates. Um, for example, your nose and your ears never stop growing. Um, that's a little fun tidbit. But they're always growing and developing. And over here we've got, again, pictures to represent our growth. Pictures to represent healing. So again, scars are proof of healing. You can see that your skin has knitted itself back together using brand new cells. And then development. These are actually pictures of um, fertilized eggs that have started to divide. So this is kind of the start of a human being, which is just a cool picture to see. The cell cycle is the process that causes our cells to divide. And it's a, basically a cell's life stages. Um, it's divided into two, inner phase and cell division, which is called M phase. Your cell spends most of its time in inner phase. And during that time, it performs normal functions and prepares for division. I like to think of inner phase as just normal cell life. It's not doing anything super active, it's just doing what it's supposed to do, doing its job, and just getting ready to divide. But no actual division happens during interphase. And when we look at this diagram, this is one you'll see a lot in class, um, or you'll see on the internet, any kind of resource will have this picture. This is the cell cycle. I like to start here where it says G1 at this beginning part of the arrow. That big blue arrow going around the outside is interphase. And you can see it takes up about 90% of the cell's life. It's the biggest chunk of the cell's life spent kind of just doing normal cell things. For your life, that would be like sleeping, eating, hanging out with your friends, doing all those basic things that you do. Um, you're not spending all of your life having kids, for an example. You spend most of your life doing other things. The second part of that phase is called M phase, and we'll get to that in just a second. Inner phase is made up of three different parts. G1 phase, where the cell grows and makes more organelles. S phase, where a second copy of the cell's DNA is synthesized or made. So we're making a second copy of DNA. 
and then G2 phase. And in G2 phase, the cell gets ready for cell division. So those are kind of easy to remember because G1 starts with a G, the cell grows. S, you can think of either a second copy or synthesis of DNA. So I usually think of a second copy, that kind of helps me. Um, I don't know why, it just helps me a little bit more than synthesized. And then for G2 phase again, it's growing, but it's mostly just getting ready to divide here. And we see that again on our cell cycle map. We've seen G1 phase, cell grows. S phase, second copy of DNA is made. And then G2 phase gets ready to divide. The way I keep the G phases separate is when you're little, you're growing a lot. That's really what you're doing. You're not preparing for anything, you're just growing. Because you're an infant, a toddler, a baby, you can't really do much else. When you're making that second copy, I think of it as kind of being in school. You're getting more information, you're like working your brain out, you're getting more information to power yourself through your adulthood. And then once you're in G2 phase, it's more like you're getting ready to be an adult. You're getting ready for having a job, a career, um, doing any of those things you want to do as an adult. So I kind of try and wrap my brain around making the cell cycle more like a human life cycle. It helps me a little bit more. Our cell division, um, again, this would be part the part I think of as maybe your parents having kids or something like that, a big life event um, where cell division would be happening. And it's got mainly two parts. Mitosis is the division of the nucleus. Remember, that's our control center where our DNA is. And it divides to create two identical daughter cells. So in mitosis, we're making exact copies or clones. The second part of M phase is cytokinesis. And that's when the membrane and the cytoplasm split apart to make our two identical cells. So this is kind of where some students get confused. Mitosis is dividing just the nucleus the nucleus and our DNA. Cytokinesis is dividing the rest of our cells. So they're both division, just of two different things. Now our cell cycle has to be regulated. We can't be dividing constantly all the time. Um, we'd be much larger than we look. Our cells only wanna divide when they have to. So when they're needed to grow, when they're getting too big, they need to divide, when they need to heal, or when something needs to be developed and changed. There are three main checkpoints in the cell cycle. Damaged cells get sent to the G0 phase or G0 phase, it's sometimes called, where they get retired till they die. My favorite way to remember this, if you have a damaged cell and it's not working properly and something's going wrong, I say it gets sent to go die, um, go like G0. So a lot of my students remember it that way. So they get told to go away so that they can be retired. If a cell runs a checkpoint, that could result in cancer. And we, most of us know and have heard of cancer, but that's where cells are dividing uncontrollably and rapidly. Cancer is just uncontrolled cell division. So it's the cell cycle gone haywire, basically. So again, cancer dividing rapidly and uncontrollably. Here's a picture of how cancer can start occurring. We start with completely normal cells. Um, your cells, when you're born, aren't going to have cancer in them. You may have some genetic predisposition to cancer. Maybe some of your genes could potentially be cancerous, but as a baby, you're not going to be born with cancer. Over time, some of your cells may have some, some issues. They could be damaged, maybe due to sunlight, um, radiation. They could be due to environmental factors, maybe toxins in the environment. And if those abnormal cells are allowed to grow, that cancer can get larger and larger. Eventually, your body starts trying to feed that cancerous mass called a tumor because it, it's living cells. It thinks, hey, that's me. I need to get some blood flow there. I need to make sure that those cells have nutrients. So your body will start to feed that tumor by giving it red blood cells to supply it with oxygen and nutrients. And that's how a tumor can get really bad and spread throughout the body called metastasis. All right, I wanna talk quickly about these checkpoints and where they are. Um, our first checkpoint is at the end of G1. So at the end of that first growth phase, if there are problems, we try and get that cell out of there so that it can't keep causing problems after that. So that's the first one. If there's issues at the beginning of the phase, hopefully that cell gets retired. After that, there's not another checkpoint until after G2 phase. Now remember, in G2 phase, that's when the cell gets ready to divide. So after it's supposed to be ready to divide, if it's not ready, that cell gets retired as well. 
Additionally, at the end of mitosis, sometimes there are problems. Sometimes we don't have the right number of chromosomes in each cell, the right amount of DNA in each cell. Sometimes they're not identical. If that's the case, those cells are going to be retired before maybe they can divide or keep growing again. And here's kind of my favorite description of a checkpoint. It's, it's like a stoplight. If you're good to go and everything's clear, everything's safe, it's like a green light, you keep going through that checkpoint. If something's wrong with the cell, it puts up that stop sign and you get sent to G0 um, or G0. Now, cancerous cells, they see that red light and they run it. That's the best analogy I can think of. So a damaged cell will see a red light and go right through that checkpoint. I'm not stopping, um, and then it will just keep dividing and dividing and dividing in that cycle until it could cause a tumor or a cancerous mass. Let's recap what we learned today. Cells divide because they grow too large and they aren't able to transport enough water, food, and waste across their cell membrane to survive. Cells divide for three reasons to grow, to repair themselves, and to develop. There are several phases of the cell cycle. The largest is interphase, and it takes about 90% of the cell's life. The other two are M phase and cytokinesis, and result in two cells called daughter cells. If there's an error in this process, the cell is stopped and removed from the cell cycle. The only problem is if this doesn't happen and the cell is not removed, cancer can occur. Thank you for watching today. Um, I hope you had fun. Please like and subscribe for more videos about biology. Um, and like I always say, I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something and I'll see you later.